Hello. So good to share the word with you today. Let's open it in a word of prayer. This prayer happened to come up this morning on my notices, and I thought it was so fitting for our lesson today. If you will, bow your head and pray with me. Dear God, we bless you for your justice, which is better than ours. We bless you for your good purposes, which are wiser than ours. We bless you for the future, which is your gift to us in this year of 2022. Help us to live in hope, not fear, in love versus being cynical, in resolution, not despair, for Jesus Christ, our Savior's sake, amen. It's hard to believe we're already through the Christmas season and Advent season and Christmas. And now, on Thursday, January the 6th, we celebrated Epiphany. Yeah, every year I say I'm going to live up my Christmas tree to Epiphany, but it comes down. But I did live up my mind just saying, and it is still up, even though Epiphany was yesterday. The day, if you remember, is when the Magi arrived to worship the Christ child. At the fallen what? A simple star, a star in the dark night. With them were shepherds. We know the shepherds. We remember them from all the Christmas plays that we saw with our children and our grandchildren, and maybe we were, we were participating in as children. This shepherd represented the poorest and the least members of society. The poorest and the least members of society. So won't you ask, well, God invites us to witness the beginning of a new stage of God's interaction with humanity. What does that mean? The whole world is invited to meet the Christ child and to worship him. Wow, the whole world is invited to meet the Christ child. And to do what? Worship Him. Our next seven lessons on Sunday will be through the lens of the Epiphany gift. We shall be looking at what the stars or the God, how they got us towards justice. We shall ask how we should follow in a way that worships and honors love incarnate. Love and honor. Honor what? Love incarnate. I'm going to read to you from a children's Bible this morning, the, our story, our scripture. You say, well, why a children's Bible? I used this Bible story book for years when I worked in the church, different churches with children in the Children's Worship Center, uh, different Bible studies. And the parents and the grandparents and other leaders would come to me and say, Gee, that's a so understanding. I understand the story. And I happened to have this out from when the grandchildren were visiting over Christmas. And I picked up and read the story, and I thought, this gets to the point, briefly and to the point. So I'm going to read to you the story of Isaac. As we know, uh, Abraham and Sarah finally had a child, Isaac. And this made Sarah very, very jealous. And so they were sent packing. This was a child born out of wedlock to Hagar and Abraham before Sarah had the child Isaac. Okay, reading this scripture, Genesis 21. Abraham agreed to Sarah's plan to send Hagar and Ishmael away. The next morning, he filled a leather baller with water. He packed up some food. Then he gave them to Hagar and told her to take her son and set off to make a life of their own, away from the safety and protection of his tents. Can you imagine as a mother, as a grandmother, as anyone that has love for anyone on this earth, that were being sent away out into the desert. Hagar and Ismael wandered 
over the rough, dry countryside, not knowing where to go. The sun burned down fiercely. Soon they had eaten their supply of food. Worse still, there was not a drop of water left in the skin bottom. Take a moment and imagine the pain of this mother. Feel the pain, feel her worry, feel her concern. Hagar knew that they could not hope to live along without water in the burning heat. Already Ishmael was weak and lighthearted, lightheaded, excuse me. They could not go any further. Hagar helped Ishmael to lay down in the patch of shade beside a bush. Then she walked away. She could not bear to hear his moans or see his parched, swollen lips. She knew that he would soon die. Can not imagine her heart at this point? Just cannot start to. But God had heard Ishmael's cries. And he spoke, he spoke to Hagar. Don't be frightened, God said. Go to Ishmael and comfort him. He shall not die. I will take care of him and make his children a great family. Then God opened Hagar's eyes. Close by, she caught sight of a well, pure cold water. Thankfully, she filled the skin bottle to the brim, and then she put the life-giving water to her son's lips. Now we see it happening. She knew that God had seen her, helped her, when she had run away from Sarah. But he was with her still, watching over them both. And again, that's in Genesis 21, and those promises of God being with us today are just as vital as they were to her in those days. God's justice has a way of opening up, us, opening up us is closing down possibilities. Yes, God is one to open down. We were confused as he was closing down, but we saw the inheritance blessing, and we can see these blessings today. Abraham and Sarah's actions can admit, uh, even amidst, I'm sorry, our actions today. Yes, we need to look at our actions today as we think about Abraham and Sarah's actions of sending them away. Surprise to us, God had not taken up here for Hagar and Ishmael. We would have thought he would. It would have been a lesson. We would have had a lesson about diversity, a lesson about inclusion. But God's orders were different. God orders Abraham to do as Sarah requested and cast them both out. The story just lays out the plot, and it asks us to travel along with the story. We have the plot, not what we would have thought, but we are asked to follow along. Let's ask ourselves, do we see ourselves as the ones sent out, or those who stay behind? Do we see ourselves as Abraham and Sarah, or do we see ourselves as Hagar and Ishmael? Think about that as you read this. Read this scripture uh, again in your Bibles. I would like to close with a summary from uh, Richard Boris that we, a lot of us know from Belmont in his article on the lesson from Presbyterian today. He says what the story does demonstrates how God will use even Sarah and Abraham's lack of generosity to demonstrate the broad justice God requires. It begins with God's word of comfort. Comfort. Do not be distressed and sealed with a word of promise. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also. Then it leads to a miracle of mercy, mercy in two ways. Abraham's provisions for Hagar and Ishmael. Then it leads to the larger mercy of where God opens Hagar's eyes to a well from which saving water flows. While human beings then and now might draw circles of exclusion to protect themselves and their own, God expands. God expands. 
circles of inclusion to welcome those who are God's children. God, rather than worrying too much, or maybe we should rather than worrying too much about God's choices in his decisions, we might worry a little bit more about our choices in decisions. What do we decide that affects other people? What about water and bread and whom we welcome to our tables? Give that some thought this week and be in prayer for ways that we can serve injustice. And for the next seven weeks, think about the gifts that we have of the epiphany, following the star. What stars will God have us to follow? I encourage you to be active in the church this year as you follow those stars. Try to be present uh, if possible. Read your Sunday school lessons. Listen to the scripture that is read to us in Sunday on worship and the prayers. And these will find clues to the stars of Epiphany that Jesus, will, that God will be leading us to in these uh, seven lessons. I would like to close with you again with the same prayer that we opened with. If you will allow me to get my phone. And know that you are prayed for each day as members of this church, that you are loved and cared for. On the back of the Bible that I used today, I found pictures of the ones that were in a Logos group that Charles and I did several years ago. And these were all here to remind us to pray for these kids weekly. Prayer is important. We have watched some of these uh, children grow. They're now teenagers. Uh, the life of the church is so important. It's important in, in finding those stars that we will look for in the next seven weeks. Let us close in prayer. We bless you for your justice, dear God, which is far better than ours. We bless you for your good purposes, which are wiser than ours. We bless you for the future, your gift to us in this year of 2022. Help us to live in hope, not fear, in love versus being cynical, in resolution, for not despair. For Jesus Christ, I serve his sake. Amen. Thank you.